A lot of creative professionals and consumers prefer Mac over Windows. In fact, in certain industries like programming and creative design, macOS based devices dominate the market. There are many reasons for this preference, like macOS's stability and reliability, but today we'll be looking at something a little bit more exciting about macOS, its file system. So let's get into it. Hello everyone, my name's Mike, and here at Sabrin we love to make and talk tech. So if that's what you're into, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. So let's start with the first question. What exactly is a file system? A file system manages and handles data, and it's basically all of the methods, structures, and techniques used to organize, manage, and store data on your computer or other storage device. The file system has a set of rules and protocols that tells your computer how to read data, how to file it, and how to write data. It is the guidelines by which a computer handles the data. Over the years, as technology gets better and our understanding of computers advance, better and better filing systems have been introduced, making them better at organizing data, storing data, and making sure it's secure as well. As with any technology, it is an iterative process. As the years go on, new breakthroughs in technology means new file systems need to be introduced. So let's begin with what Mac currently uses as their file system. Mac OS currently uses APFS as its default filing system. APFS stands for Apple File System, pretty simple, and it replaced the legacy HFS Plus or Hierarchical File System Plus back in 2017. You may also know HFS Plus as Mac OS Extended, but We'll get into that a little bit more later. APFS was Apple's answer to a modern file system that was designed to greatly enhance the performance of macOS, ensuring data integrity and provide storage efficiency to Apple devices. It works on the concept of containers and volumes. So APFS organizes storage in containers, which are essentially partitions or disk images that hold one or more volumes. This container can span multiple physical devices or partitions. Each of these containers can have one or more volumes, which are logical storage units. Volumes are mounted and accessed by the operating system as separate entities. One of the cornerstones of APFS was leveraging the properties of solid state drives or SSDs and other types of flash storage, which have become more common in our computers in the past few years. Keep in mind that the legacy macOS extended file system was initially made back in the 90s when hard drives were the dominant storage of choice, so it was overdue to take some advantage for the more faster and more secure flash storage technology. A great feature of APFS is something called copy on write technique. This works by only writing data on new locations on the disk when changes are made. This helps in reducing unnecessary disk operations and helps improve overall performance. APFS also supports features such as snapshotting and cloning. The snapshotting feature helps with system backups by making read-only copies of the file system at specific moments in time. You can preserve the state of the file system. So in case something goes wrong after a change, you can easily snap back in time to a point where your files weren't a mess. It's like a digital time machine. You can view this by going onto the Disk Utility app, clicking View, and then selecting Show APFS Snapshots. In the sidebar, select a volume and the APFS snapshots on the selected volume are listed in a table at the bottom of the window. The cloning feature enables files and directories to share the same space until changes are made to the data. When this happens, a file is cloned and a new copy of its metadata is created while data is shared as well. This helps save storage space as multiple files can utilize the same base data until the modifications are made. Another great thing about APFS is that includes native file level encryption. This means that it allows individual files to be encrypted with unique keys. This adds another layer of security, especially in a world that is now full of black hat hacking and cyber warfare. APFS is also integrated with Apple's FileVault technology, enabling full disk encryption. With FileVault, the entire contents of the disk are encrypted, safeguarding data, even if the physical device is compromised or stolen. Overall, APFS is designed to be a well-rounded and efficient file system that takes advantage of modern technologies. Before we had APFS, Mac used the Mac OS Extended File System, also known as the Hierarchical File System Plus, or HFS Plus for short. 
This legacy file system has been with Apple since the 90s. macOS Extended organizes data into volumes that represent individual partitions and disk images. Since this system was developed with hard disks in mind, there was a need to include contingencies for things like fragmentations, something that modern flash-based storage just doesn't require since it doesn't need to fragment its stored information. Having said that, it doesn't mean that APFS doesn't perform well on modern hard disk drives. In fact, on the contrary, it does pretty well with modern hard drives as well. It's just that it was optimized for flash-based storage. Over the years, improvements were made to the HFS Plus file system, like adding journaling in 2003, which improved the file system's reliability and recovery after system failures by maintaining extensive logs of changes before they were made onto the disk. But as time went on, creating a new file system from scratch was needed if Apple were to move forward with the exponential development of new technologies. This is why APFS was introduced with the release of macOS High Sierra in 2017. While APFS and HFS Plus are the two dominant file systems on Mac, that doesn't mean you only have these two options. In fact, in some scenarios, you may be better served by choosing using a file system other than these two. Mac OS also supports XFAT. If you remember from my video on popular file systems on Windows, we covered XFAT quite extensively and is a legacy file system for Windows OS. XFAT can be great for portable drives if you switch between macOS and Windows systems frequently as both can read and write to XFAT drives. The reason Mac supports this file system is purely for convenience and inter-device support across Windows, Mac, and Linux. While there are ways for Windows to read APFS and HFS Plus via paid third-party software, using third-party applications isn't always ideal. Similarly, macOS can read Windows' newer file system, NTFS, which we have covered in the same video, but you can't actually write onto the drive without again using third-party software. So macOS supports a wide variety of file systems and your choice is dependent on what kind of work you will be doing with your Mac and if you need cross-platform support or not with your drives. Also, it's important to note that while APFS is the default file system for macOS. Older Mac systems or external drives may still use HFS Plus or FAT file systems depending on their compatibility and usage requirements. So do your research before choosing a file system for your machine. Let me know in the comments down below what file system you use and why. I want to hear your choices. But that's it for today's video. If you've enjoyed it, then make sure to smash that like button and also hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.